Hi, my name is Ellie and I'm from Element Canine and this is Ember and today we will be showing you how to train the rear cross. So the first step of training a rear cross um, involves training the dog that it's okay for the, them to turn their heads and their bodies away from you. So how we're going to start building this is by teaching the dog on both the left and the right sides how to turn in a circle at your side. As you can see, Ember is pretty experienced with this, so she does pretty well. So with a low hand and a treat in my hand, I'm going to lure her body around in a circle like that. Yes. But it's okay if she gets a little bit out of position because all we're working on right now is getting their dogs comfortable with turning their bodies and heads away from us. Yes. Good. So that's step one. So once your dog is able to turn in a circle at your side, um, now we can add in something that looks a little bit more like a rear cross. So in this move, we're going to be walking in a line back and forth. Um, you can use as big or as small of an area as you'd like. So I'm going to be walking along like this. When I get to the end of my line, I'm going to turn her away from me and reward with the other hand. So turn her away, reward with the other hand. Turn her away, reward with the other hand. Yes, good job. So once your dog is able to turn away from you with um, minimal luring with your hand, um, then you can start adding in your verbal command. For me, I say turn. <laughs> I use the command turn to mean turn away from me. Um, a lot of people use switch, or some people train left and right directionals. Um, frankly, I can't think about my left and rights when I'm running full speed around the agility course, so turn works for me. Whatever. But Ellie, you say, how am I going to turn this little trick into something that's actually useful on the agility course? Let me show you. So you remember the step that we just did, teaching the dog to turn away from us on the line going back and forth? We're going to do the exact same thing, but with a jump right in front. So it looks a little something like this. The dog is going to be in between the jump standard and myself. So jump standard dog me. And with, with my left hand, I'm going to lure her head around and when she commits to the turn, I'm going to pivot with her and then reward with my right hand. Girl. So you'll notice that I am not jumping Ember at her full height of 20 or 22 inches. Um, this is because, like I stated earlier, this is not a jumping exercise as much as as much as it is a handling exercise. So I don't, I don't particularly care that the jumps are low um, just because it allows me a little bit more time to figure stuff out for myself without tiring her out too much. Come. So as your dogs get more proficient with your jump turn commands um, at a close distance, after you start adding in the verbal, um, the dog, and the dog understands what you're asking, you can start moving further and further back and cueing the turns a little bit earlier. So for example, Ember, come. jump turn. Yeah. Good job. Ready? Come. Jump turn. Yes. If you'll notice, my body language is exactly the same as with the close-up work that we did but um, just a little bit more spread out because I, we're working a little bit further away. All right, so here is what the finished product will look like after you have completed your rear cross training. Ember. 
Jump turn. Yes. Good. Let's talk about troubleshooting some common problems that you might have when training your dog to do a rear cross. The most common thing that my students, and I guess myself as well, have is by getting the dog to go around in a circle. A lot of dogs are very resistant to turning away from you, um, and one of the biggest ways we can help them is by using a nice low hand. If our hands get too high, Dogs have a problem moving their neck. You see how she can't get around like that? But if you drop your hand, it'll be twisting and turning in no time. And the same thing applies. You may run into exactly the same problem once you start adding in a jump. Um, your dog might jump and spin, or knock the bar, or just do behaviors that tell you that they're not really understanding what you're asking. So remember the tip earlier about the low hand? That's the quickest way for you and your dog to be successful at this stage. So I'm gonna send her with a high hand and I'll see if I can get her to spin. I'm not sure if she will. Jump turn. Oh, good girl. Look at that well-trained dog. But no, okay, so that was with a high hand. That was incorrect. With a low hand, watch the difference in her body language. Good job. Jump turn, yes. Good. Jump turn, yes. Jump turn, yes. So this is Cass, and he has never done this before, other than maybe one or two sessions. So I thought that he might be a good one for you guys to see for a less polished dog and their kind of their thought process here. Good job. Yes. Good boy. Turn. Yes. Good boy. Here. Jump turn. Whoops. See he had a spin because my hand was a little high. Jump turn. Whoops. Jump turn. Yes. Jump turn. So I don't know if you noticed there, but I had to give him a little extra help with my hand, and that's totally fine at this stage. Turn. Yes. Good boy. So as you can see, training rear crosses does not have to be a big mystery. By following the steps that I have provided you today, with a little bit of hard work, you and your dog will be on your way to rear cross mastery in no time. Thanks for watching.